And the reason why I had to share about the message of inclusion first, whether you believe it or not, right? That God included all of mankind, that God is inside everybody. Then if you could accept that message, then you'll, it won't be that difficult to accept the teaching that I'm going to be giving now. Now, I've been teaching healing for several years, since 2006. And most of my teachings when it comes to healing was within the charismatic stream. We call Christian Christianity, right? Now, what I started to realize once I got a message of this inclusion that everybody was included in Christ and that everybody has God in their life, that opened up more doors on me to explore other people that are not called Christian, yet they believe in healing. Now, some of us just hearing that could even feel uncomfortable just hearing that, <laughs> right? Because here's, here's my point, folks. Christians do not have a monopoly on God. Christians do not have a monopoly on God nor on healing. What does that mean? We as Christians or Catholics or whatever you want to call it, we do not own God. We are not the only ones who know how to heal. God is not that small. God is not that limited saying, I'm only going to heal you if you're a Christian. Do you know many non-Christians that don't get, or do you know many Christians that don't get healed? And if some of you have explored this issue or know some people that are not Christian, you've seen some people get well and get healed. I know I have. See, so why is that? And so one of the things that I'm going to be doing, which is it's exciting for me because the first time I was able to teach this, this stuff that's not strictly Christian, yet there's still some, I don't even want to say Christian. My focus is being Christ-like. There's a difference because there's not that many Christians that look like Christ. So my, my main goal is to be Christ-like. What does Christ reveal about the heart of God when it comes to healing? What I'm going to be admitting here is that I've been studying, I've studied some of the best guys that we've learned in history. You read books about Smith Wigglesworth, you read about John G. Lake, you hear a lot of people even today within the charismatic movement. I was able to study healing under the vineyard. I don't know if you heard of the vineyard before. The vineyard was the movement in America that they were, they were called the leaders of the signs and wonders movement. I was able to do some ministry there. And so I'm not going to get into too much detail of my story because I want to get straight to the teaching because it's long, okay? But I'm giving you a background that I'm not sacrificing the things that I've been taught from the Christian church. What I am acknowledging, though, is that there are other aspects of healing that many Christian churches are not aware of, but yet they're within groups of people that are not labeled as Christian, and yet I still believe you could still hold them together. Now, for many of us, we never heard of quantum healing, and this is happening in the world today. And yet many of us as Christians have no idea why. Because Christians are not talking about it. Because we only think that we are the only ones that understand healing through the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, there are many groups in this world that, ha that learn how to tune into this power, but yet they're not called Christian. Now many people will say it's demonic then. It's not. If you look at the principles and the teachings that they have, I would see videos on YouTube of people that are getting healed from people that are not even Christian. And I'll see YouTube comments saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter because this is all demonic. It's from the devil. Folks, these people are being healed of cancer. Even the Bible says, why would Satan cast out Satan? If these really were things that were from the devil, you better thank the devil for healing your mom of cancer. I'm going to throw out some names here for, for, for people that have influenced me, so this is not original. I'm not a scientist. I'm going to be talking about physics, okay? And so I'm going to be sharing some names with you so you can do your homework on this and look into some of these authors and speakers more that have influenced me, that just in case I forget to quote them when I share a bunch of stuff about uh, the way quantum energy works, I'm giving credit to them because I learned it from them. This is not original. Okay, so there are people like Greg Braden, Alexander Lloyd, then you have guys like Amit Goswami, who's also a nuclear physicist, well-known in that world, where he's able to explore what, what con the power of consciousness, that you know we're not just material beings, right? There's an immaterial aspect to us of consciousness, that consciousness grounds all being. Then you also have people like uh, Eric Pearl, who's known for reconnective healing. 
So I could go on and on and on of all these people that are, are, I think, some of the pioneers for what is called energy healing that is consistent with Christian healing. They're just using different terms. That's it. So you'll meet a lot of people who talk about how the divine within them. Well, don't we believe the same thing? We just don't say the divine because it sounds so new agey. We'll say God is in you. (laughs) Or sometimes people will feel energy while they're getting healed. They say, I feel electricity and tingling. But what do us Christians like to call it? Oh, that's the Holy Ghost that's come upon you. It's the same thing except they're calling it by a different name. And this is where we have to open up our minds to see that God is so big. He's not limited to a small group of people called Christianity or Christians. But yet he has love for all of mankind, all of humanity. And keep this in mind. Truth is truth no matter where it is found. I'll say that again. Truth is truth no matter where it is found, no matter whose mouth it comes out of. If I see a prostitute down the street saying two plus two is four, am I not going to believe her because she's a prostitute? If a Buddhist down the street says, we need to love one another, should I not listen to that Buddhist even though he said love one another because he's a Buddhist? And yet you could hear another person who's a Christian that says, God is angry at you and he's going to punish you. You see what I'm saying? So Christians can speak truths, Non-Christians can speak truths, and Christians can speak falsehoods and lies, right? And so can non-Christians. So I'm not saying that one group is more special than the other. All I'm saying is that God is included, has included all of humanity with wisdom. Keep whatever tradition that is true. Don't just keep a tradition because it's sacred and your, your denomination has held it. Keep a tradition if it's true, but reject all the tradition that's not true and, ex- and accept all truth that you've discovered from the mouths of people that are not even Christians. Now, this is going to be surprising for a lot of people. Is all truth contained in this book? No. Now, does this Bible contain truth? Yes. Now, why are some of you not going to Bible college to study only the Bible? Because the Bible doesn't teach you everything about biology or about physics. Or about psychology. It could give us some ideas from the wisdom from the past, so I'm not negating this book. My point is that we're learning so many things throughout history that many people are only stuck on this book saying, this contains everything. No, it doesn't. This contains many truths. But this is just one truth among many truths. Not saying that everyone, what, it's not saying that whatever you believe is true, But that truth is not only contained in this book. If this truth, if only truth was contained in this book, we shouldn't be reading Christian books. You should only be sticking to the Bible. But why do you read Christian books? Because some of those Christian books help explain what you don't understand in the Bible. Is that true? Some of us, we've read Christian books, right? Some of you have read books about parenting. Now, it could get a couple of principles from the Bible about parenting, about raising up your children in the ways of the Lord, but it doesn't teach you everything about how to raise a child in this generation. Some of your books on parenting teaches you about psychology. You guys get my point? I'm, I'm, I know I'm hammering it in. But my point is this. All truth is truth no matter where it is found. And in my discovery of healing within the past year, I've been doing healing for six years and it's been going pretty well. But ever since I've been learning more about quantum healing and quantum energy from people that are Christian and non-Christian, scientists and physicists. It's even made my belief in healing even stronger.